So, like Sam said, I'm from the Independent Workers' Union of Great Britain, and we do get a lot of media attention for our work in the gig economy, but really our origins come with low-paid migrant workers, and it's with people in these insecure arrangements that the funding network has helped us help. So I'd just like to start off, first of all, by saying thank you to the funding network and all of its donors for helping us achieve very successful impacts for our members. And last year, when we spoke to the funding, funding network, uh, we, hi we came along with Maritza, a cleaner who is at the University of London at Senate House who was part of a collective case with the union in 2013 regarding bullying and harassment that she'd experienced at work. And Andrew, who's taken several different cases for us, uh, one for his case with Excel concerning his employment status. He was misclassified as an independent contractor, which meant he had entitlements to absolutely no employment rights, and he managed to win that case. And once Excel were taken over by City Sprint, we managed to establish in law for the first time that people classified as workers had the ability to transfer their rights from one company to another under the 2P regulations. So what did we actually pitch for last year? Maritza and Andrew were two of a thousand members that were keen to see a new employee in the IWGB's legal department. And they were also keen for us to see our funding go as far as possible. Last year we said that funding one employee can lead all the way to a barrister, including QCs in the event of a tribunal. We usually try to get people doing the work for us pro bono in the courts, as you know, we're very low resource and we manage and we represent very, people in very insecure arrangements. The end result was two caseworkers that we hired, Giulio Rocco and Andrea Regresta. Uh, they are both Italian, that's just a coincidence. <laughs> But we, um, but so we hired Julia for four and a half months, and Andrea was funded for another one and a half months. I'm very proud to say that over the case of the last year, the legal department returned mostly successful outcomes or partially successful outcomes. As you can see, we got 67.3% successful outcomes from our cases, and six, another six and a half were partially successful. I think nothing really shows our determination to help low-paid workers more than the amount of cases that have returned with unsuccessful returns. Only 10.7% of cases were unsuccessful. And Julia and Andrea played a very significant part in all of that performance. Julia's cases returned with a 54.5% successful returns, whereas Andrea's returned with a 36.8% of successes, with another yeah, with another uh, five point, no, oh, sorry, that's just my, my mistake. Yeah, so, so they're both mostly successful, and what's also well is that most cases are not left pending, and that, I think that is the most vital skill, and of the cases that were closed, again, our determination, and true to the legal department, Julia and Andrea both made sure that they had a minimal, very minimal amount of cases that were unsuccessful. Andrea has a slightly higher share with 15.8%, but Julia managed to return less than 10% of cases as unsuccessful. But behind these, all these numbers are actually really powerful individual stories. And really with the one case that Julia and Andrea helped, this was a story that really touched me. Because in this particular story, the member at the time was a victim of domestic violence and her ex-husband uh, from, from her ex-husband, and the alleged misconduct was, that she was accused of was related to the abuse. Thanks to the caseworker's legal and moral support, she was able to return a successful outcome and not only managed to overturn the dismissal that she was facing, but also established that the charges were completely unfounded. Within a couple of months, she was able to move on with her life again. And this man that you see before you, I have put him in there for a reason, it's not a mistake. Uh, yeah, he's not my dad, he's Jimmy Johnston. He's one of our foster carers. And he really goes to show just how far our impact can go. Because from our humble origins as just a London-based union representing cleaners and security guards and other outsourced workers at the University of London, we've now managed to expand into the north of England and even as far as Scotland. Andrea went as far as Leeds to help a member, and Jimmy is based in Glasgow. 
Jimmy felt that his livelihood, his whole life, was endangered by a fire-starting foster child. So he took uh, Glasgow, Glasgow City Council to the Employment Tribunal after he whistle blew, and he felt that as a result, they treated him really badly. Jimmy was two days away from representing himself at the Employment Tribunal. After finding out of the IWGB, and two days away from representing himself, we managed to secure him with Supreme Court heavyweight Aidan O'Neill QC, who also intervened on our behalf for, for during the Article 50 case that you may have heard of. And eventually, we managed to secure Jimmy with employee status. This was a huge victory. No foster carers had any entitlement to employment rights before this decision. In fact, in law, it was very difficult for them to prove otherwise. There was legally binding decision in the Employment Appeal Tribunal that said foster carers didn't, deserve, didn't have employment rights because so many of their terms were negotiated in statute, which if any of us have met any low-paid workers, I think the saying that any of them can have any decision on negotiating their terms and conditions is absolutely ridiculous. The resulting headline from Jimmy's case was this. It made the front page of the Scotland Times. And really, this is what we talk about the most, because it's hope that we want to bring to our members. Even before any kind of successful outcome, this is the most valuable resource that we provide, and what our funding provides. Because really, a successful outcome is so much more than just a settlement, or just some kind of feeling over your employer. It's making sure you have an environment where you feel welcomed. And it's making sure that, you have, that you're comfortable in always standing up for yourself. And that's the most valuable resource we can provide to our members. And thank you for all the funding that makes that possible.